Welcome to the fish tank. Hey everybody, Fishman here, and welcome to a video series that I've intended to start for quite some time now. My original intent was to set it up, get it running, and then wait for some progress, uh, get some results, and then put it all together and show it to you. Uh, but instead, I've decided, seeing how I don't know how this is going to turn out, I mean, I have a reasonable idea about it, but you never know. I thought what I would do instead is <laughs> drag you guys along for the whole process. I'm going to go through uh, the setup and the reasons for it, and then kind of give you some of my expectations. There's one part I am going to hide until uh, much later on, but uh, alright, let's just get to it. Now first off, this is the same underground filter that I've been using uh, for all the tanks that are to the left of this one. The only difference I did is I put a center bracket on it instead, so the undergravel stack is going to be right in the middle. Now this is all hooked up to uh, the same uh, overflow system as all the other tanks, and also the only other change of course is that uh, overflow right there is a greater diameter. Other than that, it is all identical. I did put on one of the deflectors that I've been trying out, and it is also going to have one of the no clog air stones. So, other than that, it has the new lid, and the reason for that lid is this is going to be a marine tank. A marine tank run by one of these little under gravel filters. No other filtration will be on this tank. There is one other little thing I'm going to be doing. Uh, but that's going to be saved till later because it's uh, nothing really major. It's just going to be part of how I am going to do uh, auto water changes on this. So I want to save that for a, a future date. So this is an underground filter, in theory. I mean, <laughs> when I first started doing, um, well, when I first started maintaining aquariums, uh, when I worked in a pet store when I was back when I was a teenager, Marine tanks uh, were run with undergravel filters. Uh, the undergravel filters, of course, were across the entire bottom, and there were other things and whatnot, and there were issues with all that. But I am going to try and do this throwback with some stuff that I've learned over the last little while and see if I can actually maintain uh, a marine aquarium with not just, you know, um, you know, clownfish and damsels and that sort of stuff, what I really want to do here is see how well I can grow coral. The other thing is, this is not high-tech lighting. This is good quality LED lighting, but it's just 10K uh, LED. There's two light strips, the exact same strips that run across this whole thing and go down to uh, the other end of the tank that run all the freshwater tanks. They grow lots of really nice uh, freshwater plants, but I have no real clue as to how well they're going to do just two strips on a marine tank. Now, I do use these strips on other marine tanks, but I run more. So I may have to actually add one later on or two. We'll see how that goes. But that'll be about the only uh, conciliation I'll do for this. This is going to be as bare bones as possible because marine tanks are expensive. Uh, running them is just uh, a deep pocket kind of approach. You would need to do lots of different things to it. And I would like to see if I can put together something simple. I mean this is a little bit of acrylic, an air pump, uh, some LED strips, and of course live rock. You can't get away from that unfortunately. And I'm gonna see how successful a marine tank I can make because this is ultra cheap. I mean I just hooked it into my air system. Uh, well the acrylic is what 15, 20 dollars worth of acrylic and off you go. It's, it's like I said, it's very easy to do. Now, I'm going to do, as I said, regular updates on this. One of the other things I'm going to do, uh, because I really want to <laughs> push the limits of uh, how much uh, this can ta uh, take, I am going to start off with hard corals. I don't recommend that, but I have a, a number of marine tanks that take care for clients, and I had to do a bit of uh, trimming anyway. So I thought what I would do is include those in this, and the tank hasn't been cycled yet. So we're going to see how that goes as well. I'm going to put them in, I'm going to show them to you in a few minutes, uh, and we're going to go over what they are, well at least the ones I know what they are. Some of them have been in tanks for so long uh, that I don't even remember what they were originally. I can give you rough ideas, but there are going to be four hard corals in this, and well let's just go and we'll show you uh, what those are going to look like. 
So here you go. This uh, tank is now two days old. The first clip uh, was it all cloudy, was day zero. Uh, the clip I've been putting on a bit of a loop while I <laughs> go on and on about explaining this is uh, day two, and this is day three. So this is an uncycled tank. And I have a candy cane coral there, or sun coral, not sure which on the right. Uh, that is a Duncan's coral there. Uh, this is a frog spawn, little uh, polyp I took off, and then the big one, the coral uh, to the right there now. I have no idea what it is. It's a hard stony coral. It grows really well in the tank it's in, so I thought it'd be a good addition for this. But as I said, this is not cycled. This is just a raw tank, so first off, I don't recommend doing this, but I had to prune those pieces off anyway, and I have nowhere to put them at the moment, so I figured it's a perfectly good time to try that out here. The Duncans I think will be fine. Like I said, it's only been in here for a couple of hours, so it's just starting to open up. Uh, but we will see, because like I said, this is going to be a raw system for the next six weeks until uh, things start settling down. I mean, I just dumped all that uh, uh, crushed coral and rock and whatnot into the underground filter a couple days ago. It was cured rock. Was, I mean, it's in my main sump that I run in my fish room for when I do... Uh, when I, you know, when I get uh, when I get new live rock, that's where I put it all, and that's how I cure it before I put it anywhere near an aquarium. I haven't gotten any new live rock in quite some time, uh, so it is all quite uh, cultured and cured and whatever you want to call it. It is quite stable, but it's not. This was all new water. Uh, it needs to. Lots of stuff needs to happen in this tank. And I want to see how well that's all going to do. And these four pieces of coral are going to be my barometer. So that is the outset for this. I am definitely going to give you updates on this uh, probably every couple weeks. Hopefully it'll all work out. And I definitely want uh, <laughs> predictions or what you think of this in the comment section. Uh, definitely let me know how you think this is going to go. Uh, I, Like I said, the reason why I wanted to do it this way is for that specifically. I want to see what people think. I want to know what you think of this sort of thing. I mean, I really do want to set up... I mean, this is my first nano saltwater tank to begin with. Uh, my smallest one at the current time is uh, 120 gallons. Uh, so this is going to be something that uh, is new to me too. Uh, but I think I know enough tricks that I should be able to get this to work. But I didn't want to just show you as just an end product and... Here you go, this is how it's all going to work. This is how it worked. Uh, so I want to do it as we go along and see if I run into any hiccups, uh, see what I need to do to uh, get around those, and all that sort of stuff. So definitely lots of feedback, please. Uh, let me know what you think, and uh, we'll see how this progresses. Now, the other thing I want to do before uh, the end of this video is I want to show you, I mentioned a little while ago that I had that big tank uh, at the top of a rack that I use for uh, growths for Africans. And that current one, I think uh, I mentioned I was using it for uh, just uh, curing driftwood. It wasn't even really hooked up to the system anymore. Well, I want to make a massive mutt guppy tank out of that because I've been growing a lot of guppies lately and they're spawning like mad. So I had to get that going. So let's, I want to go and have a look at that. So here's the dirty mess. All I keep in here is driftwood I'm soaking uh, so that it gets waterlogged and will sink and also leach out as much of the tannins as possible so it doesn't uh, cloud or sort of color the client's tanks. has an old light on it. Uh, I don't really use it anymore. Actually, I haven't used it in about a decade. Uh, and also, there's a bunch of java moss in here that I pull out from client's tanks, and I just, I'm a hard to throw away kind of person, so I kind of hang on to too much junk. The nice thing about this tank is it's already hooked up to the system, so when I want to do water change on this, I just have to put a screen on uh, the overflow and then uh, fill this tank up with water and it'll just drain down and it'll be very easy to do. So first I gotta drain this all out and the best thing to do with that I find is a large wet vac. I mean this thing is a lifesaver. So I drain that all down, I splash some water in it, I scrub down the walls of the tank a little bit. And I'm going to fill it up with fresh water. And what I'm going to do initially is I'm going to put on uh, one of the box filters I've been using. Uh, this one here. And uh, I intend to have this converted to the five airlift stacks that I've done. And I want to run that into a tray system. 
Uh, but I, right now, I just want to get this running. I need to get this up and running. I need to have uh, room for all those copies that have been breeding for somewhere for them to go. And that needs to happen as quickly as possible because they are breeding like flies. And then the funny thing about it is the more females you have reach maturity, uh, that really escalates fast. So I put on the new LED there and I'm going to turn that on. I'll probably put a light screen over that just so it doesn't uh, shine in your eyes or my eyes, I guess I should say, when I'm working on this. Uh, but I just, like I said, I just wanted to get this going as quickly as possible. So here it is. Uh, I think it's the same day. No, actually it's the next day. And, it, you know, it's running fine, uh, bubbles fine, lights are annoying, but uh, that's easy to easy to get around. Uh, the water is clear, uh, there's no reason for it not to be. And this is a nice big tank. It's going to have a lot of guppies in it, hopefully. I mean, that's my plan. I've always wanted a massive tank full of guppies, so uh, this is going to be it. And once I get this really going well... It'll be a great source for uh, supplying small fish for my uh, clients' tanks. Now, I had to do a prune on hornwort, as I do all the time, because the stuff grows like crazy. So I threw a few sprigs in here uh, just to help start everything going. There's some snails and some shrimp, and it's pretty much all ready to go now. So it's just a matter of throwing in the first few guppies. Now, I initially what I'm going to do is I need to put a bunch of guppies out into uh, clients' tanks. So initially, I'm just going to throw in a few in here. Uh, the nicer males, a couple of babies, and then I'm going to let that go for a little while longer. And then I'm going to start putting up uh, groats. Uh, i got a bunch coming up. I want them to go in here and be a great space for them to grow out. And it should be really quite cool for that. So, And as this progresses, I will give you an update on it, uh, just like the uh, Nano Marine Tank. And hopefully this will all uh, pan out uh, the way I want it to do. <laughs> and uh, the only way to to see that though is actually to go through the process and do it the guppy tank is not going to be a problem as long as i don't run into any issues with any kind of genetics with them so far they look really strong and really good and i'm hoping that continues and the rest of it's just a simple matter of seeing how it goes the nano tank well it will be what it'll be if you like this style of video please like and or subscribe and that'll be much appreciated and i will see you in the next video and bye for now